Aside from the thrills and discoveries associated with cave diving, there are some facts to be aware of and fundamental aspects of the activity that must be completed to become a professional caver. Today we'll cover all you need to know about cave diving. A cave diver's driver's license is a cave diver's certification. Having this is to ensure you are knowledgeable of the techniques, laws, and risks while you dive in caves. Why would anyone want to endanger their life on such a dangerous adventure without being trained? Over 400 people have died as a result of inadequate cave diving training. Certification is proof that you have completed the cave diver training for different levels of diving you will pass through. You can only be permitted to dive to certain depths based on your level of certification. Now we'll examine the different training and certifications in cave diving. The training has two divisions. The first is the standard cave diving courses and certificates. The second involves specialty cave diving courses and certificates. These are some of the standard cave diving courses and certificates to be acquired. Number one, cavern diving. It's an exploration of an overhead environment within the portion of the light zone illuminated by sunlight. It differs from cave diving because it's just within a linear distance of 164 feet 50 meters from the surface and a depth of 66 feet 20 meters. Cavern diving aims to train the open water diver to dive in an overhead environment safely. In this training, you are taught how to use a single water tank, which is an extension of recreational diving. The diver must possess the skills, knowledge, and ability to plan dives and techniques to solve problems for safe cavern diving after the completion of the training. Number 2. Cave Diver – Apprentice Cave Diver This is the second step of the training required to complete the full cave diver course. You can see that each type of training is a prerequisite to the other. You have to follow the rules of the sport for you to be certified and permitted to dive in any cave. Through this training course, you'll be able to develop basic cave diving skills. You'll be introduced to the fundamental principles of full cave diving, but it won't cover all facets of full cave diving. You can penetrate the cave environment at a limited depth of 98 feet 30 meters. You're exposed to actual cave dives as you learn dive planning and refine your diving skills. This is where your former techniques learned during cavern diving are expanded and critiqued. At the beginning of this training, you'll be exposed to different cave diving scenarios. At the end of this course, you will have gained proficiency in various skills and knowledge of cave diving, such as dive planning and preparation, problem solving procedures, swimming techniques, and emergency procedures. You'll be equipped with the basic abilities needed for safe cave diving within limited penetrations. You'll be taught how to use double tanks through this training. You must be able to master buoyancy control and how to work with a reel and lights. For safety in cave diving, you must keep your awareness level high. You must not get too carried away. Number three, penetration diver and full cave diver. This is the final course in the standard cave diving course curriculum. Here, you're exposed to more sophisticated and complex cave diving scenarios. You're allowed to dive to a maximum depth of 131 feet, 40 meters at a maximum. You'll be taught advanced cave diving planning and execution. The techniques learned through the previous courses are fully developed and refined during this training. This level of achievement in cave diving is only attained by a small number of divers worldwide. It's a level of advanced capability and training. Some of the specialty cave diving courses and certificates include Number 1. Stage Tank Diving Specialty Course This is mostly recommended for full cave divers. Divers who are not properly certified are strictly prohibited from entering the overhead environment beyond the zone where free ascent is guaranteed. The course is aimed at equipping trainees with the special techniques of rigging one or more stage tanks using the necessary hardware and regulators. Number 2. Side Mount Diver This course is only for experienced cave divers. It's recommended for full cave divers who want to explore small caves. In this course, they'll learn how to use an alternative cylinder and harness configurations where it's not appropriate to use back-mounted cylinders or they are not available. 
It's complex and can be challenging even for the most experienced back mount diver, but only a side mount diver has true self-reliance. Number three, scooter diver, overhead environment. The essence of this training, scooter or diver propulsion vehicle, DPV, is to expose the trained cave diver to the fundamentals of how to safely operate diver propulsion vehicles in underwater caves under the direct supervision of a qualified DPV instructor. Number four, underwater cave surveying and mapping. This training course is strictly recommended for full cave divers who are willing to extend their skills towards the scientific aspects of cave diving. The cave diver is trained in the fundamentals of an underwater cave survey. It encourages more divers to survey caves, use cave maps in dive planning, and increase the quality of published cave maps. Number five, Trimix Diver Course. This course is designed for more daring cave divers. The Trimix Diver Course transforms seasoned tech divers into aggressive experts who go much further and see magnificent areas few people will ever visit. Trimix is a respiratory gas made up of oxygen, helium, and nitrogen that is used during deep commercial diving. Throughout the deep segment of technical diving expeditions and in professional leisure diving, you'll undertake dives as far as 300 feet 90 meters during the course, but once you've earned this difficult certification, you'll have few boundaries. Your studying instructs you to progressively gain experience, which you do because you've come so far and have further discoveries to accomplish. Equipment used in cave diving. Now, having known the certification required for different depths and stages of cave diving, let's get to know the equipment that's used. Without the necessary equipment, cave diving becomes a dangerous adventure to embark upon. Number one, mask. Masks with a black silicone skirt are mostly preferred because they admit less overall light and cause your pupils to dilate. Number two, fins. You need powerful flat-bladed flattened fins, which are not able to get easily entangled and help frog kicking and other specialized propulsion techniques needed for cave diving. Usage of hinged or split fins is not advisable. Number three, exposure protection. A 7mm full-length wetsuit and a hood are required for safe diving. Hand gloves are not being used because you need your sense of touch while diving in caves. Number four, instrumentation. You need an independent means of monitoring time and depth while diving in caves. You can make use of two dive computers or a dive computer with a depth gauge and timer. Number five, BC air cell, harness and primary cylinders. Air cells must be able to provide adequate lift while diving. For side mount, an appropriate side mount harness and air cell are needed, together with two 13-liter cylinders with side mount attachment. While a back mount diver will need 13 liters of manifolded doubles with a dual orifice isolation manifold. Number six, regulators. Two separate balance first stage regulators are needed for a primary cylinder and one second stage regulator that has a long lead for gas sharing must be used. Seven feet, two meters of the hose is mostly used. Number seven, stage and deco bottles. They are used for the first two days of a full cave diver course and a tech cave diver course that goes beyond an introduction to technical diving. A deco bottle with oxygen is needed for this training. Number eight, primary and backup lights. A primary light must have a minimum of 1,000 lumens. 2,000 or more lumens is advisable. Two backup lights, specially designed for cave or technical diving, is recommended. Number nine, reels and spools. Two safety reels or spools with about 150 feet, 45 meters of line in between are needed. Spools help to manage short lengths of a guideline, while reels help to manage longer lengths of guideline from 30 feet, 10 meters and above. Number 10, cutting tools. To get entanglements off yourself, a conventional dive knife isn't advisable because of its size and bulky nature. Instead, different variations of a parachute line cutter like the Z-knife can be used. Two cutters are advisable. Number 11, slate or wet notes. While wrist slate is good for tech diving, wet notes are a better option for cave diving. Number 12, surface marker buoy, SMB, or lift bag. You must be able to inflate your SMB underwater using your regulator's exhaust. It's used for technical diving courses. 
Number 13. Cave Markers There are a special set of markers that cave divers use in keeping tabs on the direction they are exploring and the distance they've covered. What makes these markers effective is that they can easily be identified by a simple touch or sight. The cave markers can be categorized into three types – directional, non-directional, and a new hybrid category. The directional markers, also known as line arrows, are used to direct divers to the nearest exit or, in some cases, to indicate the cave's midpoints and secondary routes. Just like its alias, line arrows are placed at regular intervals within a cave. And this could be every 100 feet, 30 meters, or every 200 feet, 60 meters. The non-directional markers category, also known as cookies, are used to differentiate lines when divers are at a T-intersection or to mark the reference points during traverses and circuits. These markers are also used if team members get separated. When other members see it, they can know who has exited. In addition, they have drawings or initials that serve as a form of personal identification. It's important to note that cookies are only to be considered by the diver or team who put them in place alone. The hybrid marker, or REM, referencing exit marker, is quite new, and the reason it's called a hybrid marker is that it serves two purposes. It serves as an arrow to the diver that placed it, and a cookie to the other divers. It's rectangular and has slots, which enables other cave explorers to be able to fix it to a line. Also included in it is a space for identification for teams or individuals, and a small slate on the other side to write some reasons for the marker which could be when a team member is separated and at what time he exited the cave, or the purpose of the exploration being carried out within the cave. It's important to note that the REM is a personal identifier and shouldn't be used for directions by other cavers. Where a particular cave diver exits might not be suitable for another based on their gear differences. Cave Diving Hazards It's a known fact that this activity is hazardous. Divers are faced with different physical and health hazards with the equipment they use and the diving zones they choose. You must be aware of the likely situations that can come your way while diving. Number one, near drowning. This is the survival of a drowning event that is caused by inhalation of liquid. It involves unconsciousness, water inhalation, and secondary complications that can result in death after the incident. Number two, equipment failure. One or more pieces of equipment that you are using can go faulty or misused, and this can provide the diver with hypoxic gas. It can lead to a reduced level of consciousness, seizures, comas, and death. Number three, salt spray inhalation. A diver can inhale a mist of seawater from a faulty demand valve, resulting in saltwater aspiration syndrome, a pulmonary reaction to salt. Number four, carbon monoxide contamination of breathing gas. This leads to carbon monoxide poisoning. It's caused by contaminated air from a compressor that sucked in combustion products such as its own engine's exhaust gas. Number five, kicking up silt. While diving, silt from the roof of the cave may be mistakenly kicked up. This will reduce the visibility of water or block it out completely, making it difficult for divers to find their way. Number six, Loose Guideline Without a guideline, a diver may not be able to trace his way back to the entrance. Divers must be taught how to navigate their way in case of loss of guidance. There are other hazards a cave diver is likely to face while diving, such as infection of the skin as a result of coral cuts, entrapment, and crushing trauma. Also, in cold circumstances, a reduced core temperature leads to shivering, loss of strength, loss of consciousness, and sometimes death. How to do it safely. Safety precautions. Taking necessary precautions before and while diving can preserve your life for another adventure. These are the basic precautions needed for a safe dive. Number one, to ensure that you don't get lost inside the cave, always use a continuous guideline to the surface. Number two, Save a larger portion of your air supply for your return to the surface. Number three, when cave diving, always bring a backup light with you. Three lights are advisable. Number four, don't go beyond the depth that your gas supplies can carry. Number five, 
Don't dive until you have mastered all the necessary techniques and are mentally prepared for your adventure. We'd like to thank you for watching this video. Let us know in the comments section what you think of this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like button, consider subscribing to our channel, and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting cave diving story.